Welcome to this short tutorial on uh, structural behavior of simple structures for use in the perspectives class. In the illustration you see in front of you, which is actually inside the program mastn2.com that we'll use later in the course, I've built four models for us to take a look at today. Uh, this is a arch, a simple arch structure, uh, a simple cable structure, a truss structure here in the upper right, and a little beam. Uh, in the models, the purple lines are the actual structure, so like the bridge if you like. Um, the green arrows are the load applied, so uh, in this case that would be like a big point load, like a truck or a heavy person. And the red arrows you see are where the structure is actually supported back to the ground, to good old Mother Earth. Um, so it can't move uh, to the left here and it can't, or to the right and it can't move up and down, and that's what the red arrows tell you, the direction in which the structure cannot move. This one's kind of unique in that I've built all of these in one little model so we can look at the results. So. Um, uh, it's, these things are actually about 10 feet wide and they've been built out of a small piece of steel uh, for our purposes and there's a thousand pound load uh, in the middle. So first thing I'd like to do um, is show you uh, the results of what this looks like and just how it uh, deflects. So this is uh, if that load was to actually come onto the structure how it would move and you see the arch the cable and the truss actually don't have any perceptible movement, uh, but this beam is not working out too well. Um, so you wouldn't probably want to walk across a bridge uh, made from this material. Um, we can actually change uh, the scale. Um, so right now we're looking at the true scale, so this is the actual amount of deflection you'd see. Um, we can increase that uh, quite a bit and look at the deflections, and now you'll see that this beam is definitely no good, and you start to see some deflections in our little arch structure, our cable structure, and uh, our little truss, uh, king post truss over here in the upper right. So now we might start to wonder, um, well, what forces exist inside these structures? Um, and uh, we start uh, dealing with things like load path and how this applied force gets to the supports. Um, we can look at those results in something called an axial force diagram in order to see what that looks like. Um, and you get these beautiful pictures. So these are uh, simple representations uh, of the force, internal force in the structure. It turns out in these drawings that the red is compression and the blue is tension. So if we look at just this upper left drawing of the arch, you'll see that the way an arch resists its load is by the entire structure being in pure compression. Everything's in red, everything's equal. A cable, as you know, is a tension structure, um, so just like a piece of string strung from this point to another point and pulled down in the middle, it's all in pure tension, uh, as you can see here. Um, an arch, uh, or excuse me, a uh, truss structure, like in the upper right, is a combination of members that are in balance, in equilibrium, with both tension and compression. So you see uh, the top cord, what we call this, the top members of this king post truss, are um, in compression. You'll see the center post is in tension, and the bottom cord uh, is also uh, in tension. Um, interestingly, you'll see the beam doesn't seem to be in tension or compression. Uh, in fact, something else must be going on uh, with that beam. And uh, we can look at something called the bending moment, which is a slightly more advanced concept, and we'll see at least a first view of what's going on. These guys, the arch, the pure arch, the, in this particular uh, shape, um, cable and truss don't have any applied bending. They're able to resolve all those forces into just tension or compression. But this little beam uh, is getting killed and has a large amount of bending. It's greatest in the center and decreases to uh, zero at each end. So that's the basic uh, forces for uh, the internal forces for these little structures uh, that you'll need uh, to understand in order to answer a few of the questions in homework two.